Hiya guys, welcome back. It's been uh, it's been just over a week, I think, hasn't it? Um, so we've got the body all glued up now, um, and here we are with part 11. So just a quick recap, we glued the body on, fitted the gear stick and the handbrake. Um, the actual uh, seam here, you can see the seam, we're going to deal with that now and um, sort of make that all uh, uniform and beautiful. The thing we have to be careful of is not to be too clever with the seam on the bonnet because obviously the bonnet hinges up so there would have been a gap there. So I may not put anything in there at all but I may just show you how to even it up. Um, and the other thing we have to look at is these holes. Now there are holes here which we'll have to deal with. Um, you can see that I've gone in with a knife and removed the pin. There was a pin on the bonnet that went into a hole and that needs to be cut off like this. Well not cut off but shaved through because what you don't want to do is see a, a sort of gap and then no gap and then a gap again. So what we're going to do is just go through with that like that and I've done the same on this side and removed the, the pin. Now what I want to do now is I've got a sharp pointed scriber and I want to just go around the edge. I'm going to stick the needle in the end and just go around the edge a couple of times just to make sure I've got an even gap. And just going around like this, if you can see what I'm doing, will give me a nice even gap all the way around. And this is only on the bonnet. I'm not going down here. This is only on the actual bonnet or the hood if you're in America. It's only on that bit. So you can see there we go just going round and just scratching the plastic away so that I get an even gap all the way around. I think my dog's going to start barking because I think somebody's daring to walk outside the house. How dare they use the local pavements. So there we go. So I've just gone round now and just scratched that in there. So you can see now we've got a gap all the way around the edge of that bonnet. All right. Okay, now the next thing I'm going to do is just with the knife, just remove that little edge that I've pushed up. You can see there's like a shard of plastic in there that I've pushed up. I'm just going to, there we go, gone. So just go over that, just tidy that up. And there we are. Um, the other thing we need to look at is this hole here. As you can see, there's a hole. And what I'm going to do is go around with the Mr. Surfacer, much like I did round here, and and make this um, this seem lovely. But the trouble is, if you've got a hole there, the Mr. Surfacer will always go down into that hole. And when you do the alcohol on the cotton bud, it's going to show that hole back up. So what we need to do is make this that hole make it the same as the rest of the kit. So I'm going to take a piece of plastic sprue, like so, there's a piece here, and what I'm going to do is with a knife, I'm going to shave it down until the end of this piece of sprue forms a wedge that will go into that hole. I could cut this or sand it or whatever, but I'm basically just making a peg that I think will fit in that hole like so. It needs to be thinned out a bit more. I think what I will do is sand it actually. It just needs to be thinned out a bit more. And now that will go in that hole and wedge it nicely. Now one thing I am going to do is make it slightly more acute, get some more angle on it so it goes a bit deeper. Push that in, you can see now that's wedged in there. And what I'm going to do now with a tiny bit of this extra thin from behind, I'm just going to put a tiny drop on there. just to stick that in. Now what that'll do 
it's soft so I can push it a bit deeper and there we go that's gone in there now and now I should be able to snap it off there you are so that's gone in there like that and now we've got basically we filled the hole in with a piece of plastic so that when we actually come to put the mister surfacer on and then rub it away we don't end up going into a divot what we would end up with is the mister surfacer going down into that hole now I'm going to take a piece of 1200 this is a new piece fold it tightly and then just gently rub over the area that we're going to do the mister surfacer on I'm not forcing it in I'm just gently rubbing just to remove any you can see now there's a bit of glue there that's oozed out of the, the seam and we just want it to be all nice and level And then what we can do is get our soft sanding stick wherever that is here it is and then just polish away just to make sure we haven't got any oozed out glue in obvious areas there's a bit there and then down in there And today is Wednesday, Thursday, sorry, the 14th of March. And very soon I'm going to be starting a build along with the ICM slash Revell Junkers 88 that everybody chose. So if you are new to the hobby and you're beginner, you might want to join in with that. Get hold of that kit. It's not a group build, it's a build along. So what I'm going to do is week by week, I'll just put like an hour up or something and you can uh, build along with me and we'll all work on it together. So we'll do a stage at a time and it's up to me to do it every week and it's up to you guys to keep up. <laughs> and if you think I'm going too fast, I'll slow down. And if you think I'm going too slow, I'll speed up. But obviously if one person says speed up and everyone else is happy, then I'm not going to speed up. It needs to be a joint effort. So just again, down in there, make sure we've got no glue oozing out. And that's that done so that little area there where I put that sprue in is now is now uh, sanded flush just get down in there everything's lovely right so that's that taken care of now I'm gonna get my mr. surfacer get a brush sorted and uh, paint some mr. surfacer in those gaps show you a little trick here guys if you've used your brush with mr. surfacer and you've um, forgotten to clean it good way to clean it is in the glue the brush into your uh, thin glue quick wipe off and it's done and obviously if, if your glue level is very low perhaps not do that because you'll uh, you'll make the glue not so sticky so this is my mr. surfacer a thousand um, there's the label there you go mr. surfacer 1000 if you haven't seen this before, look back on my other videos and you'll see me using it. I've used it a lot when I was doing the, the bonnet area or the hood area. So I'm putting the brush in and I'm not being sparing and it doesn't really matter how accurate I am. I want to try and keep it out of that door shut line. I'm putting it on quite heavy. The reason being is it shrinks back and it will probably shrink into that joint. The joint between the body and the, and the fender. Or the mud guard and what I want to do here is is have it so I've got plenty to remove I don't want to keep having to put more and more applications on so that's why I'm putting it on quite heavy I'm probably gonna to have to put another one on wherever there's a gap because it will shrink back into the gap but I don't want to start putting filler in that in there because it means I have to start sanding it around and getting the shape back whereas with the mister surfacer all I'm going to do is wipe over that with a cotton bud soaked in alcohol and that will retain the shape of the plastic I won't be changing anything so I'll do the same on the other side here just paint the mister surfacer in the gap or not in the gap in the corner should I say like so and 
there we go that's the rear fenders done onto the front let's put some down in there and the same down in there now looking at here the bonnet is the gap at the front of the bonnet here is bigger than the rest so on this side I'm gonna put some in here and hope that what it does is shrinks back and gives me a gap but a smaller gap so I'll just brush that out like that there we go and what I do now so it all matches I'll do the other side as well and then if I need to I can always go over again with my scriber and re-establish that line I'll be putting a wash on this at the end anyway so that will pick up all the the shut lines and everything just put some more in there and there we go so I'm just going to check around make sure I haven't got any gaps coming back no nope, nothing at all so there we go that's cool just gonna put some down in there and now as you can see straight away the whole thing looks so much better because it's all become one the body has become like one piece instead of a lot of different assemblies so um i'll let that go off now for a while and i'll get in there with my um cotton bud and, uh, and uh thinners i'll probably use the ak thinners but you can use any any acrylic thinners you'll see some people use cellulose i wouldn't especially not on a body part like this so um that's that for now i'll see you in a second and we'll do some uh, corrective work right it's been about an hour and a half now that i put this on and as you can see it's um it's dried um and at the back there as i predicted we've got some gaps um you've also got some uneven gaps around the bottom of the bonnet there i don't know what to do about those um i think i might go over them again actually and then i can get them even with a with a pin or a scriber so i've got my mr servicer thousand here opened up ready and so all i'm going to do is simply once again putting it on quite heavily let's just add some more in and hopefully it will fill these gaps up um if you buy mr servicer i would suggest buying the thousand unless you can afford to buy all three because there's the, well there's four there's a 500 thousand 1200 and 1500 but by all in my opinion the 1000 is the most useful because if you want thinner you can um thin it down a bit and it's pretty much the same as the 1200 i think the uh, 1200 is probably a bit finer but um the 1000 thin down a bit with some Mr. Color Leveling Thinners or Mr. Color Thinners is um, is okay. Um, if you if you get the 500 of course you can thin it but uh, the 1000 is generally what you want for everything. Um, and the other thing is you can see what I'm doing here when I paint this I drag some up the side of the pot and within a few minutes that goes thicker. It dries fairly quickly this stuff where it starts to set and it gets thicker so you can use it like like as if it's 500 um, and then also if you buy the 1200 you, you, you're sort of stuck you can't really go much thicker with that stuff um, so yeah if you if you can only afford one bottle or you only can be bothered to buy one bottle then I would go for the thousand 
um, I probably use I've got 500 thousand and 1200 and I probably use three bottles of a thousand to every every other every bottle of the other two so yeah it's by far my um, my favorite and my go-to so there we go um, I'm gonna put some more over where that pin was because I think I can see a slight mark there which is probably going to cause me a problem actually but uh, we'll see um, so yeah, let that go off again. I might even leave this overnight. Um, you can kind of attack it within the hour. Uh, the problem is when you've got gaps like this, you you will find that it sets on the skin and down inside the gap, it's still soft and wet. And when you um, when you go over it with the uh, the cotton bud there's a good chance you could just pull it all out because it's all you know hasn't hardly set at all there's a good chance you could pull it all out of the uh, gap so best to let it go hard before you start pulling it around so there we go there we are so that's that um doesn't it look better doesn't it ever look so much better and there we are so that's it for now um so next it's going to be coming along with that uh with the cotton bud and going around there um <clears throat> i just want to look here where we are with this kit uh, we've done all this, we've done all this, um, now we're going to start looking at the rear bumper, so we've got the rear bumper supports so of the rear bumper there, and we've got this little, um, this little number plate here with the stars, uh, where's that, I can show you that, here we go, they're here. And um, if the focus in, yeah, you can see these stars. Um, I'll, I'll show you how I'm going to do that. It's, uh, I think you'll probably find it quite interesting. But uh, yeah, we'll give that a go. I'm going to, I'll, I'll see if I can um, pull it off. We'll see. So um, anyway, so yeah, we're going to go on and put those side steps in, make up the lights and everything, and then uh, I think putting the roof on, and that's it. That's pretty much that really. Um, still undecided whether to have it with the roof on or the um, or the soft top. Uh, if I th I think if I have the the roof on, I think I'm probably not going to have these side covers. Um, I'm not so keen on the on the look of those. Uh, but I think it would be good to have this all folded up because of the poor quality of the clear parts. Um, be good to have it folded up. And also that windscreen is one piece. I'm wondering if I'll be able to clip that on afterwards. We have got some holes there. So that would be really handy if we can do that. And then we won't have to worry about masking up the, the windscreen while we paint the whole body. But uh, yeah, it does look like it will just clip on because we've got those pegs in the bottom. So anyway, but look at that windscreen. It's awful. Uh, I'll try something and see if I can make it work. We'll, um, we'll come back to that one. Right, so there we go. I'll um, I'll be back in a minute. That's not enough. It's certainly not enough to make a whole video. So um, I'll leave this overnight now, and I'll get on tomorrow and uh, and get in there with some alcohol, and then um, and then we'll move forward. Right, so we've got our uh, our model here now with the um, Mister Surfacer gone off. There is still a tiny little gap in that one there that's reappeared. Uh, but I need to get on with this, so I think what will happen is it'll, um, it'll cure that gap. And also something else I've noticed, this car actually had uh, piping, which is like a rubber strip between the fenders and the body. So we may want to add something in there or not, we'll, uh, we'll have a look at that after. So all I'm going to do to remove this uh, Mr. Surfacer, I've got my cotton buds here, and unfortunately these are the, the newer type with the... With the paper sticks i'm all for saving the environment i think moving away from the plastic stems absolutely brilliant for the environment 
but not so brilliant for the modeler because the trouble with these is they get wet and then as the paper gets um gets soaked it goes all floppy as you'll see in a minute and it becomes unusable so yeah i'm using um real colors high compatibility thinner um it's it's a little bit hotter than the than the tamiya thinners and tends to work a bit faster with the um with the uh mr surfacer so just gonna if you see you can squeeze the end of the cotton bud into that crevice and rub away and it will the, the cotton bud will actually take on that shape so we can get in there and just keep going until we've basically what you're doing is sort of fairing in the edges almost like you're sanding it down and, and what they call feathering it and that's all you're trying to achieve here and I'll show you in a minute close up on the camera so you can see what I'm doing I don't really want to I'm just pushing that exhaust out of the way because I don't want to um, rub the paint off of that so sorry guys this is like watching paint dry but um, for people who haven't done or seen this before you might find this quite not fascinating but interesting and there we go you can see that the uh, if I get you in close get the camera to focus you can see that the is that focused I can't quite see You can see that the Mr. Surfacer is feathered in and made the joint seamless. Okay, I will rub that a little bit more because you can see it's a little bit uneven around this area here. So I'm just going to go back in and just rub away. And the other thing you can do, you can get hold of some um, Tamiya cotton buds, which are much harder. Um, and we'll get into the corner and I'll show you that now. Okay, so I've got these Tamiya cotton buds. This is a triangular medium, part number 87107. Um, and as you can see there, they've got a nice point to them rather than the, rather than the blunt end. The other thing is they don't spread so much um, loose hairs as these Johnson's ones do. So you're just going to use it exactly the same. Just wet it in the uh, thinners and then you can see straight away this is a lot harder. And what it's going to do is get into the corner a lot more. And you can see it lifting it away. Like so. And there we go so you can see that these will get right into the corner but uh, yeah they're not cheap um, I'll show you the other ones I've got now you can see them over here I got these off eBay and if you're in the UK quite a good little supplier on eBay is uh, Mr. Models. He does all the shows. Um, you can see here we've got the 87103. These are the small straight ones. Then we've got 87104. And these are the small round ones. And then we've got the small triangular ones here. But as you can see, they're all um, £3.25. So uh, yeah, they're not. Yeah, they were all three pounds twenty-five, so they're not cheap, um, but they last and last and last. You can see that one is still, you know, as good as new. So you can, um, whereas these, you buy these, and you probably to do this car, you'd probably use four of these. You probably use one end of this one, and probably still be able to reuse it. So there we go. That's that done. 
So I'll go on and do the. I'll, I'll show you doing a front one as well. So I know that's what you want to. You want to see that as well, don't you guys? So. And again, it's you know it's critical that we get right into the corner. So it's good that we're using these Tamiya ones. I'm just rubbing it away until I get end up with going to take this one and remove the the excess as you can see just take your time I'm not really pushing this in here very hard at all but this is also very this procedure is very very good if you're um, well, with joints like this where I wanted the seam left behind you know you can put it in there and then rub it with a cotton bud and it is sort of you can only get so deep into the groove with the cotton bud um, so like on if you're joining an aircraft wing to a fuselage and you want the panel line left mask off all the rivet holes paint on the Mr. Surfacer and then rub over the cotton bud until you've got you know the finish you want then remove your masking tape and just quickly wipe it over with the cotton bud and uh, job done what you have got to be careful of though when you do this if you're doing it near rivets and stuff you're basically what you're doing is remelting the mr surfacer and then it will reset so be careful about just rubbing it all around rivets and stuff because it will go into the rivet holes and then it will dry so you won't be able to see your rivets then obviously if you've got razor rivets then it's not an issue but again, that's something I've just thought of where you don't want to go sanding around raised rivets. Use this process and then you don't have to worry about uh, removing the rivets through sanding. But uh, you will see some people in videos use cellulose thinners for doing this. And uh, I would thoroughly recommend not doing that. Um, it, may, it works a lot faster and also inside jet pipes and stuff. You can go around with the cotton bud with the with the uh, cellulose thinners. You see, this is all just collapsed now. Um, you can go around with, with the cellulose thinners, but um, and what you're doing is basically blending all the plastic in as well because the cellulose thinners will actually melt the plastic. So there we go. You can see that uh, that is pretty much done now. And what I'm going to do when that dries, I'm just going to scratch in there with a pin to give that sort of open edge to the uh, to the bonnet and I need, also need to scribe down into the corner there and in there where the uh, the shut line sort of finishes I need to make that go right down to the fender same here so um, there you go you can see on this side we've got a nice tidy joint same on here yep and uh, all done without any sanding whatsoever so I'll get the other side done and I'll be back. Right, all done. So as you can see there, that little gap at the back that was there has now been filled in with the, um, for some reason this camera does not want to focus today. That little area has been filled in where that hole was. So that all looks much better now. And uh, as you can see, it's all, um, it's all blended in and looks like they was, you've just made as one piece. So, uh, that's one of the one of the, the key things with modeling is if you get rid of your seam lines you get rid of your joins and make it look like one piece not an assembly of parts which is obviously what it is now as I said earlier on the it looks like on the real car if you look on the front of the box you can see it's got a beading here around the around the fender and what that would have been 
obviously this fender would have bolted on with bolts going across you know sort of across the, the car um, and there would have been like a rubber piping which was sort of like in section would have been like this shape like a P and then your bodywork would be here and your fender would be there so what you would see is this bead around the corner so what you could do is get some stretch sprue or we could use some um, some very very small um, plastic rod so we can get some um, you know some stretch sprue or small plastic rod this is um, 0.64 millimeters which is I don't know it's uh, it's 25 thou it's it's really too big I need something finer uh, stretch sprue would probably be better but that's basically all you would do is wrap it round like that and then run over it with some Tamiya extra thin and it would um, it would go into the joint personally I don't know I'd rather not use it because I think around here it would look it would look like bits of plastic stuck to the car so I think for um, for this model I'm not going to use it um, maybe if it didn't have that bonnet shut line I would but uh, I think I'm going to not use it on this one um, plus I haven't got any fine plastic strip but what you could do is just use some stretch sprue if you don't know how to make stretch sprue I will show you now um, you basically just take some of your sprue cut it off like this if you waste sprue take a cigarette lighter light the cigarette lighter put the sprue over the flame not in it and just keep going until the there we go you see the sprue and then you can just gently pull it like so and just keep pulling and then you'll feel it start to go off keep hold of it don't let it go when you can't pull it anymore there you go there's your stretch sprue in and you could actually then basically just cut the ends of that away like so and then pull that around and that would be your beading and that would cover your joint if you wanted to go that route okay so I don't think I want to um, although I don't know it does look good I'll have a think about it before it's painted we can always change our minds so um anyway that's those joints taken care of what I need to do now is put all this away oh and one more thing you can see with the Tamiya cotton bud I've only used one end and you could use it again so you know they're not cheap but it's not a massive massive outlay um, full stop um, and but it's also not a massive outlay because they're gonna last you so much longer I don't know how much these are what are these two pound a pot um, there's 200 in there these are 325 and you get 50 of them so you can see it's um it's quite a difference what I don't think is fair I mean you get 50 of those but you also get 50 of these for the same money and they're so much bigger but hey it's not about the uh, quantity I guess it's about the um, the quality so um yeah we can have, have a look at doing this I don't know does look good but then can we pull it off I think we'll leave it for now we'll have a look at it again later as I say this stuff here is much too fat um, so there you go you've seen how to stretch sprue let's put this away always keep your little pieces never just throw bits away thinking oh that's a tiny piece I'll never use that because you, before you know it you'll have none left um, right so what we're going to do now remember I said about these little badges on here which have got um, these stars on to show there's a, a general in the car um, what we need to do I guess that's what they're for if you're building along with me I've got these off the car now and what I've done I've primed them I've painted them red and then I've given them a gloss coat um, and I'm going to let them dry for at least 24 hours before I do what I'm going to show you next 
and how we're going to get those stars painted and, and looking nice and tidy. So if you're building along with me, get those off now and get them painted. Whether you brush paint them, airbrush them, whatever, it doesn't matter. But you want to get them painted red and make sure you give them a gloss coat. OK, Tamiya X22, I would probably suggest is your best is your best because it's very hard wearing and I know it won't get attacked with what we're going to do. So if you're building along with me, you need to get that done now. So let's have a look in the instructions and see what's coming up next on here. Um, now we've got the bumpers to do next here. We've got these exterior door handles to go on. I'm not going to put them on yet. Oh, we've got that piece there which goes in underneath the underneath the back of the uh, radiator there. Um, I'm not going to put these handles on yet for fear of knocking them off. Um, are they chrome or are they green? They're actually painted green. So the bumpers are green as well. So we can get all this done together. Um, so the rear bumper, we need 92, 93 and 94. Okay, so we've got our parts here. We've got the bumper, which is number 94. So we can nip that one off the sprue. Like so. <coughs> Obviously somebody's walking past the house again. How dare they? And then we've got these two bumper supports here. So we can nip them off the sprue. Sorry about the dog, guys. Um, I could stop. But the thing is, I could do this and she could start again at any moment. So that's our rear bumper. So we'll just remove those screw nibs like so. As you can see, I'm cutting into myself, which is totally against what you should be doing. But it's the way I've been doing this for years and I can't do it. What I should be doing is cutting away like that. And then I'm going to take my green flory skinny sander, which is my go to sander for pretty much everything. And it's got it, it, both sides are fine, but these are the finest side. Just removing those sprue nibs. Like so. Do the same on the top there, keeping the sanding stick flat. And we also notice that all around the edge of this part, I don't know if this camera is going to focus, there's some flash all around the edge of it. So I'm just going to lightly go over it just to remove the flash from all the edges. Like so. And that lump there, I'm assuming, yeah, that lump there is for the um, for the plate that with the stars on that notifies what they're carrying or who they're carrying, I guess. And then what I'm going to do here with a here it is it's a soft floury sanding sponge, which you've seen me use so many times on every build I do. And yes, this is the same one. They last and last and last. They're really, really good tools. Um, so there we go. Just rubbing around. Whoops. That's something to be careful of, guys. See that what I did there? I caught the end of the bumper with the end of the stick, and you can easily snap parts off. So be careful of that. Don't ask me how I know. <laughs> So this was actually a, a square section of steel looking at the um, the image on the box art. So we don't really want to radius off or anything or make it round in section, but we just want to take the, the sharp corners off or the, the flash as it were. There we go. All done. Yeah, I can hear a dog barking outside. That's why. Uh, that's why little Jess is going crazy. Well, 
once again with the green sanding stick just removing the sprue nibs making sure the parts all clean again I'm going to cut the sprue nib off my cutters that's one of the beauties of having these Tamiya cutters as I've said before you can get right up close without um, without worrying about destroying the part whereas with the cheaper cutters like these when you go in at close um, you can actually kind of pull a chunk of plastic out of the out of the part and there we go so that's them done so they're going to sit in the bumper in those holes there like so so I'm not sure whether to glue these on to the car first or glue them onto the I think I'll glue them onto the car first what I'm going to do here I'm just going to scrape away a little spot of paint here where they're going to sit in just so I know they've got good contact or a good good bit of adhesion in there so I can just place that in like so and then I'm going to use my extra thin quick setting and just put some in there around the hole And do the same on this side. And then once we've got them in, we can manipulate them and make them fit properly. just going to offer the bumper up to see how far apart yeah they do it looks like they do splay out slightly so that's that yeah okay so they're on now make sure they're square looking at them from behind but as I've only glued that end I'm not putting any glue on here I can they'll be able to flex around and move up and down and side to side so um yeah once that glue set I'll be able to manipulate them and get them where I want them now I've got this piece here 84 which goes up behind the the radiator like so so that's gonna go in like that don't fit it first because then the body won't go on remember we glued the radiator grill onto the body before we fitted it to the chassis so that's going to go in just like that um, just going to remove that sprue nib from the side just like that the fit isn't perfect so it'll have to be all blended in and then we can put that on drop that into place like that get it roughly in place like so and then again I'm using the extra thin quick setting purely because it's here I could have used any of the glues I use just go around the joint yeah it's not a very good fit at all that one so uh, so it needs a bit of pulling about there we are it's that one on can't really be seen much anyway in fact guys I can show you that's something you shouldn't do what I did I put that on I test fitted it 
but didn't really look closely enough at it. What I'm going to do is remove this pin here because that pin is holding it over, it's stopping it going on properly. It's stopping me allowing to, it's not allowing me to move it over. So drop it back on like that. And then I can nudge it over now and get it even. I'll just put some more glue on there. So yeah, there's, see, you can make mistakes even after 50 years of modeling. You can make mistakes. So there we go, that's in like that. Job done. And then once that's gone off, we'll give that a sand and blend it in to make it look like it was just one piece. Um, those rear bumper supports will be going off now. So they're on like that, and now we can just quickly check if our bumper is going to fit. I think you'll find those holes will line up beautifully. There we go. So the bumper will just sit on there like that. Okay. So it looks too high up, doesn't it? But it must be that must be the way it goes. So um so there we go, that's on like that. It looks too high up. <laughs> Okay, so moving along now to the next stage, we've done all this. I'm not going to glue the bumper on just yet because I don't want to knock it off. Um, and here we've got a lot of small pieces going on um, before we get into our finishing stages. So we need to look at these lights. And basically what we've got are, there's a spotlight here. Uh, we've got these little side lights that go on the, um, on the, on the fenders there. But then we've got these these two main headlights here um, and we need to get them painted inside because they've got clear lenses on the front and the same with this one so we need to get these lights painted inside in a um, in a high sort of high chrome paint so we need to first of all find them on the sprue and there they are and what I'm going to do for doing this I'm going to leave them on the sprue uh, purely because it's the easiest way to hold them what I am going to do is cut the sprue off so I'm not handling the whole thing. So I've got those two main headlights there. And then I need to find that spotlight, which is part 102. And here it is here. So again, we've got it on the sprue. So I'm just going to cut the sprue so I haven't got to handle the whole thing. And then I'm going to take some um, take some paint and just uh, brush paint some silver in there. So what I'm going to do for that, I'm going to take a, a Tamiya paint pot, like so, turn it upside down. I'm going to take my latest favourite um, silver paint, which is this. This is the uh, Vallejo Model Air, or Vallejo. Model Air Aluminium and it's a wonderful paint, it brushes beautifully. I'm going to give it a really good shake, make sure all the pigments are all shaken about and um, just put two drops like that, that's all we need, in fact probably one drop would be enough. And I take a small paintbrush like so and then I can just brush paint in there with some of this lovely bright aluminium paint which will give it a lovely reflective surface. There we go. You can use the, um, the metallic range of paints. Um, I like using this one purely because it's non-toxic, it doesn't smell. Um, it dries quickly, it's easy to clean the brush, um, and in my opinion, for doing stuff like this, it's just as good. Um, one thing I don't like with some of the metallic paints, they, um, they kind of, I don't know how to describe, they powder. You, If you're an experienced model, you'll probably know what I mean, but particularly some of the Guns metallics, the, the, the aluminium, um, it, kind of makes its own dust like an aluminium dust 
especially if it's near matte black you, you touch it and that's it you know it's it's almost like it's burnished um, so there we go we've got that done now um, and as I said two drops was more than enough so um, that's those done so we'll wait for those to go off right so this um, this piece on the back of the uh, radiation is all dry now so I'm just going to blend that in using the fine fine side of the fine sanding stick just going to go over just gently as I say it's not overly important because it won't really be seen on the finished model anyway but um, as they say if a job's worth doing it's worth doing well so just blend that in until the steps gone We've got a bit of overspray on there which is helping us and the other thing we can do is take our black marker and just go over the joint black marker and then that will show us if we've got a step and the objective now is to remove all of the black marker because we don't want it coming through and showing through the green paint which it will do so as we can see we've got a bit of a step here where the, this part is lower than the actual radiator itself so I'm just going to keep sanding until all of that black paint, all that black magic marker disappears. Let's go to the coarser side and then back to the fine. You'll notice sometimes my hand comes down and what I'm doing is if you when you've used the sanding stick a bit it gets loaded up with the plastic dust so um, what I'm doing is just when you get like this which is loaded up I just wipe it on my jeans gone and uh, that was something I learned off of um, Mr. Phil Flory and uh, yeah, it works a treat. It like, seems like denim is the best material for declogging your sanding sticks. So there we go. Let's get this side done and then we're there. And this is all going to get painted anyway. I'm going to use an airbrush. If you're using brushes then really makes no difference. I've seen some people use brushes on models and get a finish that you wouldn't even know it's been brush painted. Personally I can't get a finish that good. Although having said that with those Revell paints thinned down, I mean you can see the finish on that blue there that's brush painted, it's absolutely fine. Um, I'm about to start a builder lol on the Revell Junkers 88 and that's a, a build along for beginners and if you look on my channel you'll see me promoting that one there's going to be a Facebook page on it as well so you're welcome to go and get the kit and join in with that one and what we're basically going to do unlike this where it's been very sporadic um, with the build along it will be <clears throat> like an hour I'll put up every Saturday at lunchtime or whatever, um, <clears throat> maybe twice a week, and we'll get so far on the kit, and then you've got then that week to catch up, um, and then you can put your pictures up on Facebook and everything, and uh, and go from there. So I'm just going to scrape that with a knife because I can't get the sanding stick into that corner, and I don't want to start sanding away the the mud guard. There we go. So any paint that we've damaged we can touch up afterwards, it's no problem. So that's all blended in now and looking uh, looking lovely. Um, as I say, it can't really be seen anyway. So that's that part done. We've painted our lights and they're going to dry. 
Um, now then, let's have a look at some of these parts that we need to get on. Uh, these, I'm assuming, are like rubber mud flaps, so they're going to have to be painted black. So we'll probably put them on and then brush paint them afterwards. These side steps here, 111 and 112, here they are. Um, they're going to require some cleanup. So what I want to do, I'm going to show you something now. I'm going to cut this off the sprue. So I've just got those two parts. Now, I could cut these off the sprue and then clean them up. But the sprue is making a really good handy tool to hold it while I clean it all up. So I can leave these on the sprue and just gently go over and scratch away, scrape away should I say, and remove these mould seams. Like so. And the knife is just your initial tool. And then inside here, just go in and cut away the, the mould seams, just gently, just gently scraping them away. And you can see that what a great job the sprue is doing in holding the parts for me. And then I can get my sanding sponge and sand over the Whoops, that's broken. Sand over the round parts. And then with my square sponge, or square sanding stick, go over and do the... Uh, go over and sand in these, um, these stays, these supports. And I'm not going to worry too much about that piece that's broken because I'll glue that back in a second. But as you can see, when you do stuff live on camera, it's good to show you everything. Even when I make mistakes. So there we go. Once again with a standard sponge, just go in here. You can see we've got some flash in that corner. Which is only to be expected on a model this old. And uh, this doing this, these little bits of scraping out flash and cleaning parts up and removing mould seams. This is what takes your model from being a nice build to a beautiful build. This is what makes all the difference. And I think you'll all agree at the end of the day when you see this finished, I think um, even me, I think I'll, I'm going to be quite surprised at how well it's turned out for such an old, old kit. You've got to remember these, these old Airfix models um, in the days when these were made modeling wasn't really an adult hobby um, it was mainly aimed at, at kids going to the local shops buying models with their pocket money and going home and building them with their friends um, these days modeling has become it sort of stayed with the, those kids as those kids have got older uh, myself included and I don't think your general your general uh, manufacturers kits now are sort of aimed at the um, at the younger people. I think they're aimed at the modeler who wants you know more accuracy, more detail, and the kits are getting more and more complex and more and more expensive as a result. Um, so that's gone back together now, and I'm just going to dab. Just going to go over that with some extra thin quick setting. I'm running along it because I can't even see where the join is. And then you can see I'm also going to go over, I'm not going to use that for this. But I got my extra thin here. This is ordinary Tammy extra thin. And I'm just going to run over everywhere that I've sanded. 
and what that'll do it'll remove the sanding marks and anywhere where there's a bit of a a remnant of a mold seam or something it will get rid of it and there we go okay so they're cleaned up now I've cleaned them up on the outsides as well and sanded them down and everything just to remove the sprue nibs and um, they're a lovely fit they just slot in these grooves in here in the chassis and there they sit and they stay even without any glue on them um, but I'm tempted what I'm going to do I'm not going to fit these yet I'm going to paint them off the car because getting in all those nooks and crannies and behind you and everything is going to involve a lot of masking so um, I'm going to paint them off the car and then put them on afterwards um, obviously I'll show you all of that now let's have a look at these parts 109 and 110 um, yeah they're obviously rubber and mud flaps here but what I'm concerned about is how here they are how thick this flange is that they glue on with it's going to be really noticeable so this side is one oh sorry this side is 110 so that's going to be that one there so that's going to go in like that I'm assuming like that um, but what I'm concerned about is when you actually look at it how thick that flange is on the inside so I think what we'll do is just remove this sprue nib like that I'm just going to clean up the edges and obviously if this is a rubber mud flap it would whoops it would be a lot thinner then we've also got a big ejector pin mark on the back of it so we'll get rid of that and with my knife I'm just scraping the edge to thin it out so it looks more like a thin rubber mud flap than a huge lump, lump of plastic with an ejector pin mark in the back and I'll say again it's little bits and pieces like this that take your model from being a lovely model to an amazing one and uh, worth worth taking these little extra steps just to get that kit that model a bit nicer now I'm going to sand this down to thin it out so basically what I'm doing is thinning out the whole part removing the ejector pin mark and getting rid of that huge great thick lump that's going to be glued up inside the, the wheel arch And at the same time sanding away and removing that ejector pin mark in the back so you can see straight away just with that couple of minutes there the difference in those two parts yeah one looks so much better but it's a lot thinner and when I did it live on camera there's been no editing you can see how long it took me no time at all So there we go and I'm going to put these on now because I'll probably end up brush painting them after they're done and that bottom edge isn't straight so I'm just going to it's got flash on it yeah that's what it is it's got flash so just clean up that bottom edge and then once again I'm going to have to scrape in and get it thinned out so I'm going to hold that in place like that yeah that's where it's going to go so I'm going to remove remove some paint from there just put some extra thin on here and just stick that down whoops And then I can put some more on. There we go. Now you can see that looks like a thin rubber 
mud flap rather than the great big thick lump that was on there. I'm just going to check that these still fit even with that in place. Yeah, no problem. So I'll get the other side done and then I'll come and show you how we look. Right, so those mud flaps are on now and uh, I think you'll agree with them all thinned out and that they look a lot better than the um, than the standard plastic parts you get. So it just shows, you know, just a few minutes scraping with a knife, a bit of a sanding stick and you can uh, vastly improve the look. So, um, and even if you want to, after they've gone hard, you could sand away the, the inside a bit more. But um, it can't really be seen, but I just didn't want that huge lump in there on my model. So, um, <clears throat> so they're on. So just to end this, uh, this segment, I'm going to show you how to remove very fragile parts. Now, if we look here, we've got the steering wheel is on the sprue. Now, if I just go in there and start cutting away, because because when you cut, you tend to um, push one side apart. Um, right then, guys, sorry about this. Um, I was merrily talking away there and hadn't realised my camera memory had gone. Uh, I did a review yesterday on the Revell Junkers 88. Hadn't deleted it, so of course loads of memory in the camera was taken up. So um, what I basically was starting to show you as this cut off was that when you use sprue cutters, um, generally what happens is as you, if you watch as I cut here, you see it pushes this part away. So if on this side of the cutters there's a weak part, like the steering wheel was here, um, it more likely break the steering wheel. So what we need to do is find a way of removing, oh, and, and it's even worse when you've got the cheaper cutters, it's more exaggerated because they've got more of a, or exaggerated should I say, they've got more of um, an obtuse angle so they, they push apart even more. So um, basically what we need to do with flimsy little parts like this, we need to be very very careful how we remove them and all I was going to show you was there's a couple of ways of doing it. A, you can use a very sharp hobby knife and literally just cut down through but must, must make sure you hold the part firm down on the bench. Um, if the part is too high up as you cut down you might snap it so push it down on the bench if you need to put something under it to support the actual part rather than just the sprue. The other way to do it is with a saw. Um, here's one of my fine razor saws there's many different types you can get. This is actually the uh, RB Productions one. Um, it's got coarser teeth on one side than the other so uh, and then all you do then if you want to remove little fine parts is just literally get in and just saw them off and that puts no pressure on anything then um, so yeah it's a good little tip for getting fine parts off um, <clears throat> I then went on to show you that basically if you want to mount these parts on like a steering wheel on a cocktail stick um, and it's not a very good fit if you just remove some of the end of the cocktail stick when you push it into the hole it will make it fit a lot tighter <coughs> excuse me so there we go so that's now mounted up and ready for painting um, I also then went on and started looking at what else we could start putting on the body I fitted the fuel filler cap that required quite a lot of cleanup um, so it's unfortunate you haven't seen that uh, but yeah that required quite a bit of cleanup um, I removed the front bumper from the um, from the sprue and uh, straightened all that out, which I think you got. Um, and I've also fitted the horn part 100, which is here. Um, the front of that is solid, so I showed you how I drilled that out, and unfortunately you can't see that. But I basically went in first of all with a one millimeter drill, and then using the end of the knife, went in and. And sort of opened it up to end up with this kind of horn looking thing. You can see there you've got like a, a the horn shape in the end. I don't know what is wrong with this camera today but it just does not want to focus at all. Um, so there we go you can see that there. Um, I hope you get the idea. So uh, yeah so now we've got a horn. The other thing is um, We've got these tiny little lights here, part number 105 and 108 going on here. Um, the holes in the fenders for them to mount to are massive. 
they're they're actually 1.3 millimeters and the pin on the actual light itself is about 0 0.65 0 0.7 so what I've done I've put some 1.3 plastic rod in those holes glued it in and then when we do the next part I'll show you I'll drill them out 0 0.7 and then we'll have a nice positive location for those lights then um, the paint is obviously still drying on the on the headlights and everything so in the next video we'll cover painting all these bits and pieces we'll get the bumpers on and I'll also show you how I'm going to do these um, do these stars so uh, yeah thanks for watching um, thanks for staying tuned in and uh, not getting too bored I thought this was going to be a lot quicker than it actually is but um, you know to sort of show you everything it can be quite drawn out and maybe sort of slightly boring to some but I'm sure different people will get different bits of um, value from different parts of the film oh the other thing I've done um, if you look on the bonnet here I've basically opened up that that line just got in with the scriber and just literally gone round and just rubbed away like that so that there's a gap um, and it looks much better it'll hardly notice when it's painted and everything but in my opinion it just looks better with a gap rather than having it sealed up because it actually in real life it's a it's an opening part so there we go so um yeah as I say thanks for watching um, if you've liked this please give me a like if you think your friends or someone you know is going to get advantage from this or benefit from it then please tell them and get them tuned in as I say starting that um, build along next week which is kind of similar to this same sort of in-depth thing we're showing you a few tips and techniques but actually building along so I'll do so much you follow me on and then a week later I'll do a bit more and you follow me along and, and we'll go like that um, we'll see how it goes it's the first time I've done it and I don't think I've ever seen anybody do it online before either so um, it was suggested to me by a guy called Rob from Canada and uh, he's not built a, a model kit for 30 years or 40 years even and um, thought you know maybe it would be a good idea and um, yeah I think it's a great idea Rob thank you so uh, oh, and that's going to be on YouTube on YouTube on Facebook as well so that's at uh, attract a lot of people in as well so well uh, yeah have a look at my review of the kit I'll tell you all about the um, the build along in there and uh, and, and go and get your kit and, and build along with me and it'll be um, be good fun get your pictures up on Facebook and everything or you could email the pictures to me and I'll put them up on the channel so um, thanks for watching and I'll see you all soon uh, I think this has been part 11 hasn't it so part 12 will be up next and we'll get these lights fitted and stuff and um, get this one nipped in the bud pretty much. So thanks for watching and bye bye.